Hi, I'm Steve Dillon and welcome to another segment of my video blogs. Today we're going to be dealing with an instrument that I acquired recently, but I've known about and I was instrumental in getting two of the pieces together many years ago. Uh, it's a Diston cornet, but before I bring out the cornet and show it to you, I'd like to talk about the Diston family. The Diston family were from England. They were very uh, influential in the brass world in the 19th century. There were basically five different distants. There was John, the father, George, Henry, William, and Theodore, the sons. And they were around at the very uh, start of sax building of what they called the sax horns. Matter of fact, the distants became the sole distributors in the United Kingdom for the sax horns. They formed a brass quintet and they toured uh, throughout the, uh, Europe and throughout England and they were a brass quintet until around 1848 when one son, George, uh, passed away. In 1849 they came over to the States, they toured the States. By 1850 they had already played over 10,000 concerts as a brass group. They were very famous. Matter of fact, the Metropolitan Museum in New York has a jug that was made, I guess it would have been an early concert thing, that, that shows the distance on it. They were so famous that jugs were made up and sold at their concerts. So um, then they got into brass manufacturing around 1850. Henry uh, and uh, a son started to, uh, they called it Distant and Sons, they started a brass manufacturing. In 1868, they sold out to the Boozy Company. In 1877, which, which is the more what we want to uh, deal with here, because um, right now we're dealing with the American distant, they migrated to the United States and set up shop in New York. Now, at first they worked with Bush in New York. Diston uh, shared a bench with Bush, and then he uh, worked with Moses Slater in New York until uh, 1882. In 1882 he went down to Philadelphia. J.W. Pepper hired him. He worked with Pepper until 1890 where he set up his own factory in Williamsport and basically worked there till he died in 1903. Brewer Kiefer, who was his foreman, took over and carried the uh, company to just about World War II. Now the instrument we're dealing with, I'm going to bring it here. Here's the case for it. It has its original key. I'm going to open it up. Pull it out gently. It is a New York Distant Echo Bell Cornet. You see the Echo Bell? The Echo Bell acts like a muted bell. It's four valve. This one happens to be in just about excellent condition. It was made in New York. It even says Henry Distin Maker. 115 to 121 East 13th Street near 4th Avenue, New York. Now the interesting thing about this is it's a presentation instrument. It was made for a gentleman in Keyport, New Jersey. The gentleman's name was William Shellard, S-H-E-L-L-A-R-D, and it was given to him July 1st, 1880. Now, along with this, the Echo Cornet, comes with a multitude of things. It's got the two mouthpieces, they're distant mouthpieces. One is an Arbuckle model, one is a Levy model. It comes with the C attachment. You could take off the main tuning slide, put this on and you could play the cornet in C. It comes with the regular B flat crook. It comes with an A crook. It comes with the piece for the um, the C attachment to put the mouthpiece in, and it comes for another bit to adapt to adjust for pitch. The other thing it had in the case is the cleaning rod, the grease cup, which has turned to powder, and the music lyre. Now, the interesting thing about this instrument is this. About 20 some odd years ago, a collector friend of mine happened to acquire it. I happened to be over his house and he said, you need to see the instrument I just picked up. I went and looked at it and I said, man, that's absolutely spectacular. But it had nothing with it. It was just the coronet like you see it here. 
A few months later, I happened to be over to a friend of mine, Barry Furrer. He's the Sousa collector. And he said to me, Steve, you've got to see this spectacular cornet case I picked up. He said, uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. She was the executrix of a uh, distant relative's will. And they found it in the attic. They were going to throw it away. But she said, you know, I know a young man who lives by me. He uh, collects this sort of stuff. I'm going to give it to him. Gave it to him. It had all this stuff in it. Now, he had it. I happened to come over there. And on the top of the case is engraved the same man's name in a brass case handle. Keyport, New Jersey. So me being, uh, as they say sometimes with musical instruments, I'm an idiot savant. I can remember the most obscure things about musical instruments. It jogged my memory and I said, I think I know where this cornet is. I got them together. This is over 20 years ago. I was the one who put them together. My friend Barry sold the case so uh, uh, to the gentleman, so he had the uh, cornet and case together, and I finally was able to purchase it recently. It's a pretty big find. It's a really spectacular instrument, and it has a, a, a lot of nice American uh, band history with it. As I said, the Dissons were very instrumental in doing things in England, but they were also instrumental in getting a lot of things done here in the States. And it was Henry Diston who helped J.W. Pepper get his factory going, and he just had a lot of knowledge in the instrument, uh, brass instrument manufacturing. Now, after this, we're going to have Tom Bolton demonstrate it. Uh, so we're going to cut to that. So I'm going to... Um, uh, let him take over at this moment and just demonstrate how the echo cornet works. Now, if you're wondering how this activated the echo bell, it's this fourth valve right here. It would divert the air through the echo attachment, and thus it would sound muted. Now, there wasn't a tremendous amount of literature written for the echo cornet, and if you look at the other blog where we talk about echo instruments, it came from the era of the late 19, middle -ish, latest 19th century, where they made these novelty instruments with two bells, like the double bell euphonium. That's all for today. Thank you. And I look forward to sharing some other uh, interesting instruments with you in the future. I'm Steve Dillon.